morning, everyone. We're going to get started. This is the Colorado River Basin Water Supply Briefing for May 5th. I'm Michelle Stokes. I'm the hydrologist in charge here at the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center. And Ashley Nielsen, one of our senior hydrologists, is also on the line. She will be helping uh, monitor questions and help answer the questions. Here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to go over the weather that we saw in April, look at April flows. Since we're now uh, within the forecast period of April through July, we need to look at what kind of flows we had in April, the snow conditions, uh, water supply forecast. And after that, we'll look at the error of our model of our forecast error in May. A couple slides on the upcoming weather. And then at the end, uh, there'll be time for questions. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, and the slides and the recording will be made available on our webpage a couple of hours after the presentation. All right, let's start with April weather. Um, we have uh, precipitation here on the left and temp maximum temperatures on the right. There's a big difference between what happened in the upper parts of the Colorado and in the lower parts. In the northern basins, we had periods of warming and dry periods that led to quite a bit of snow melt. And, but we also had cool periods, so the snow melt would slow down and we had some rain and snow. Uh, overall, temperatures in the upper basins were below average. Uh, precipitation ranged from way below to uh, above, slightly above uh, average. Had warmer and drier. Hang on just a minute, sorry. Lower basin, we actually had warm and dry conditions throughout the month, which led to more continuous snow melt. Uh, temperatures were near normal to above normal, and we had record dry April across much of Arizona. The water year precipitation for 2023, so this is from October uh, through April throughout our basin. Um, the map here in the middle shows that we had above average precipitation over most of the area with some exceptions. Less precipitation in the western slopes of Colorado, on the western slopes of Colorado, extending from about the Fraser Basin to the headwaters of the Roaring Fork, and then some local places down in Arizona. On the table here, you can see um, we have for significant areas, significant uh, runoff areas throughout the basin where most, most of the water is coming from. For April, you have the percent of uh, average from the average of 1991 through 2020. So above Lake Powell for the entire upper Colorado uh, was about 68% of average for April, which added up for an October through April precipitation of 121% of average. And then you see the numbers for the other major basins in Colorado. And see how there was very little to no precipitation in the lower parts of the basin. Here are the stream flow. This is unregulated stream flow volumes for April for the upper parts of our basin. Um, there was quite a range. We are, uh, we've shown here some of the um, hydrographs for the whole month of April for some of the more um, areas that gave runoff this past month. Uh, the Little Snake, which is on the border with Wyoming and Colorado. You can see the hydrograph there with a pretty good chunk of runoff in the middle of the month. In the Dolores, we had three significant uh, periods of warming and dry weather, which, which caused some pretty good runoff, and we actually reached, reached flood stage at uh, Cisco, Dolores and Cisco, a couple times during the month, month of April. 
and then down in the Virgin River Basin, a more continuous snowmelt runoff there. So the values, uh, these are the values that were over 200% of average for April. So those were the, the ones that produced the most runoff. And we're gonna look at, on the next slide here, we're gonna look at more of the area. Uh, let's see, uh, we'll start up on the green. The green, first of all, had less snow and it stayed cool during the month of April. So we had l l less runoff in other parts of our basin. And if you look at the map here on the upper left-hand side, you can see that we did start some melt. This, this is um, uh, an average of all the snow tell in that basin. So you can see that we did start barely to have uh, runoff in that area. Kind of this in chain, sort of the same story, but more precipitate, more snow. There's a lot more snow in that area. And then the three, the two down on the left lower side, uh, the Virgin River group and the Dolores River, you can see that we melted quite a bit of snow in, in April but we still have a lot to go. And you can also see how much above average we were because the purple, I should explain, the purple line is the average, the blue line is this year's snow accumulation. The other four were the Yampa, um, the Roaring Fork, the Gunnison, and the San Juan. All those are well above normal and we started melting, but we're just at the beginning of the melt in those areas. And then you can look at the map to get an idea of um, the percent of, uh, of average of the unregulated stream flow volume that we've seen in those basins. As far as snowpack conditions, as of May 1st, uh, the map here shows uh, for significant areas. So this is usually around 8,500 feet and above. Um, we, the gridded the shaded areas are from our model, and then the squares are the NRCS no-tell uh, observations. And you can see that we still have, um, as of May 1st, the median snow water equivalent is very high in most areas, with the exception of the west slopes of the, of the front range. Um, overall, maybe 200 to more than 200% of normal, and there's still some areas that have record snow. And we've in the table we've showing we're showing April 1st um, percent of median, and then May 1st, and then we show the change from uh, April 1st to May 1st. So if you look at it, it, Lake Powell overall, uh, it dropped a little bit. So one thing to keep in mind is that maybe we did accumulate a little snow in some areas, we did melt some snow in other areas, but also the May 1st normal percent of median is going to be slightly lower than, or somewhat lower than the April 1st um, percent of median. So the overall story here is that in the Green River Basin, we've um, either added to the snow melt, to the snow, or we've uh, not melted any of the snow up there. That's the general um, message here. And uh, for the Colorado River headwaters in southwest Colorado, we did see some snow melt, which shows up because we have a lower percent of median on May 1st. The other message is that there's been so far minimal high elevation snow melt in April. Most of the snow melt we've seen, most of the most of what contributed to the flows in April were lower level snows, snow, snow uh, melt. Okay, let's jump into the water supply forecast. So for the whole upper Colorado River Basin, these are our numbers, the 9% of average from, for the 1991 through 2020 average. Um, the upper green, 95 to 145% of normal. Duchesne, 130 to 240% of average. San Rafael, Dirty Devil, 130 to 270. The White Yampa, 135 to 210%. Upper Colorado, 80 to, uh, that's lower 80 to 150% of normal. The Gunnison and the Dolores, 100 to 
45% of normal and the San Juan 140 to 240% of normal. And all this brings the Lake Powell forecast to 172% of normal. This is our water supply evolution plot, um, which shows how our forecasts have evolved throughout the season. Um, just a quick reminder, the shades are our forecast that, that are produced every day. The blue line in the middle is the 50% chance of exceeding exceedance, which is which basically means that's the number. There's a 50% chance of being above or below this volume. And then the red pinkish uh, bars are the official forecast. 50% is in the middle. The lower dot is the volume that has a 90% chance of being exceeded. So this would basically represent the volume if we have a drier uh, weather scenario in the future. And then the top number is the volume that has a 10% chance of being exceeded. So if we have a wetter, wetter future, future scenario, that we, that would be more where we would expect the volumes to be. Uh, keep in mind, you know, this is a probabilistic forecast. There's always a 20% chance that the volume could be outside of this um, range. And since we're in uh, at the end of April, we, are, we have to add in the observed that we've had in April because our forecast, our model, you know, runs from today on out. So we need to add in the observed uh, volume. Okay, so this is for Lake Powell. So our 50% uh, exceedance volume is 11 million acre feet, which represents 172% of average, 179% with a 90% of 9.6 million acre feet and 12.8 million acre feet on the upper end. Uh, you can see that the, vo so the brown line is the average volume that we would normally, that we accumulate on average from April through the end of July. And then the orange is what the observed has been up to date. We are above, right now we're above what the average is. Observed accumulation so far is 1.4. Okay, let's look at things a little bit more detail. Um, these are the volumes for May 1st. So if we look at the green, the volumes. So uh, on the little, on the map, the first number is the actual volume in 1,000 acre feet. The second number is the percent of average. So for the upper green, the forecast range from 90 to 145% of normal. In the white and Yampa, much more snow in that those basins. So our forecasts are 135 to 210% of average. And down in the Duchesne, 130 to 240% of average. Here's the evolution plot for the Green River at Flaming Gorge. You can see that um, we started the year just, you know, and we started the year near um, normal for that area. This was, you know, right before we started accumulating all the snow. And you can see that the forecast kind of stayed the same and maybe dropped a little bit, but then we had that very wet March and April. So our forecast started to increase. So our forecast here is for 135% of average, 1.3 million acre feet. And the observed stream flow to date is above normal. Down in the main stem of the upper Colorado, you can see the values here again. First number is 1,000 acre feet, the volume. Second number is the percent of average. And over the whole area, it ranged between 80 and 150% of average. Here's the evolution plot for the Green Mountain Reservoir. Uh, that one didn't receive uh, the extra snow that we saw in um, the other parts of the basin again. Uh, so our forecast is slightly below average here, 84% of average. To 235,000 acre feet. 
uh, the ob observed flow to date is right below what we, we get on a normal, uh, on an average year. Denison and the Dolores. Uh, downstream, or as you move to the west, uh, forecasts are higher. And overall, they range from 105% to 245% of average. I'll leave that up for a minute if you want to take a look at the numbers. Evolution plot for this, uh, for the McPhee Reservoir in the Dolores. Uh, so of note here is that the green dotted line on, on the evolution plot is the maximum, historical maximum, which was in 1993. So as you can see, we're forecasting the 50% to be above uh, what we've uh, seen, you know, the maximum year. We've uh, put a little table here with all the high years um, for this location. So our forecast right now is for 500, 550,000 CFS, uh, acre feet, sorry, which would be, you know, quite a bit above, well, somewhat above what the highest was, which was in 1993. A lot of runoff already in that basin. San Juan forecasts that, uh, range from 140 to 240% of average. Pollution plot for Navajo Reservoir. Our forecast at that location is 1.01 um, million acre feet, which represents 160% of 60% of average or median. It's kind of we put down you know where this fits between it fits between 2017 and 2019 as far as the volume that we're forecasting for this location. And over in the Virgin River Basin, 240 to 320% of average. We've had a lot of precipitation fall in March and April in this basin. Our forecast went up quite a bit during that period. A lot of runoff already. Uh, April through today, and high for this location was from 2005, and our 10% exceedance probability is barely touching that uh, that volume. And then here's the snow plot for that entire group. The purple is our normal. 2005 is drawn is uh, in green, and then. Here's snow conditions. You see we've melted maybe half the snow in that basin and how it compares to 2005. All right, that's it for the forecast. We're going to talk a little bit about um, verification. And this, is, this map shows what our forecast error is in May. So as we move through the season, our forecast error uh, decreases. You know, in, in January, it's going to be a lot higher than, than in May because um, we have uh, a lot more information in May than we did in uh, January. Overall, so the dark blue, uh, low forecast error, around 10%. Uh, overall, in May, our forecasts are maybe 11 to 17% error. And as a general rule, we do better in headwaters. We do better, you know, in basins that are primarily so snowmelt basins, and that we know what's going on with the diversions and the demands in the basin. Where we don't do so well is the lower elevations that are more impacted by rainfall <clears throat> and early melt, and that are also downstream of diversions and irrigations. In mind, <clears throat> keep in mind that the future weather is really the primary source of error and uncertainty in our forecasts. All right, current river conditions on the left here. This is from our front page on our web page. Uh, all the colored dots are areas that are active, which means uh, the flows are uh, reaching uh, 
either or near our reaching action stage or flood stages. So there's flooding in some parts of our basin right now. On the right side, this is our peak flow forecasts, also from our webpage. The purple colors are uh, areas that have a good chance of having peak flows um, above certain, uh, like record peak flows or peak flows that are going to be near uh, flood stage. Above average peak flows are expected throughout uh, many of our basins. Talk about the upcoming weather. So this is the uh, quantitative precipitation forecast that from May 5th through May 12th. Um, so we're expecting a low pressure system that's going to move through the, the area, uh, mostly the northern parts of the CBRC's area. We're expecting up to one inch, uh, one and a half inch of precipitation, mostly in the upper uh, upper elevations, higher elevations of Utah and Colorado. Uh, less like around quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch in the mid to lower elevations. The pat pattern looks cool and it looks like it will stay cool through the beginning of next week. Um, beyond early next week, the mo weather models are not in agreement. So that means there's a, you know, the, the we're not very sure, we're not sure what's going to happen basically. But overall, it looks like there's a 30% chance that high pressure will develop next week. And that will, that will lead to normal temperatures below normal precipitation, so some more snow melt later next week. And from the Climate Prediction Center, here is the outlook for the eight to 10 days, uh, and to eight to 10 days out, so May 12th through 18th. For precipitation, what you're seeing is that we have uh, elevated odds of having above average precipitation across Colorado, Arizona, and southern Utah. And on the right side, um, this temperatures, 8 to 14 day outlook, May 12 through 18. And we're expecting there's an above, um, there's an above average temperature, um, there's a above Average temperature is favored for across the Western United States in general. So wet and warm potentially. All right, this is the summary. So we didn't show any slides, but uh, for the soil moisture conditions in fall of 2022 for the Upper Colorado River, which is what counts, you know, what the soil conditions are when the snowpack starts to accumulate, we had near to, to below normal uh, soil moisture across many of the major runoff areas in the upper Colorado. For the lower Colorado River Basin, what's currently happening down there is more relevant and we're above average for the soil moisture in that area. The weather for April, northern basins, we had periods of warm and dry snowmelt and then periods of cool and wet uh, air, uh, pre with added precipitation, overall below normal temperatures. In the southern basins, we had this more continuous snowmelt with warmer and drier conditions that persisted through most of the month. Um, First uh, snow water equivalent for the upper Colorado, we put down a range there of 110 to 255% of normal. The May 1st water supply forecasts, if you look at the upper Colorado, overall 80 to 270% of average. And the piles at 172% of average, which is 11 million acre feet. Peak flow forecasts are well above average throughout most of the majority of the upper Colorado River Basin which means we have uh, flood potential, elevated flood potential through a lot of our area. And looking ahead, uh, we're looking at cool, wet pattern through early next week. Beyond that, it's more uncertain, but uh, potential for having uh, high, uh, more warmer weather, but we'll have to see. So this is the last water supply webinar for the Colorado River, River Basin. Patrick Cormos will be giving 
uh, briefing for the Utah and Great Basin at 11.30 in about an hour. We're not planning any further webinars for this season. Uh, if you need anything, if you can't find what you're looking for on our webpage, please get a hold of us and we will help you. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our webpage along with the slides. If you go to cbrc.noaa.gov, the top bar, click on about, and then on papers and presentations under 2023 presentations, you'll find uh, this recording. And if you hold of us, here are the basin focal points, the forecasters for each of the basins. Of us if um, you need anything. All right, so let's turn to questions. Ashley, do you hear? Oh, my God, questions. Um, I don't see any questions right now. We had one question that was chatted asking if the water supply forecast uh, included the April of the flow that has already occurred. And the answer is yes, they do. Those April to July forecasts include the observed April stream flow. Our model forecasts uh, the May July period and then we add back in that observed uh, April stream flow volume. So the April to July forecast is including that runoff that we've already seen. Great. Right. Other questions? Yeah, I don't see any, Michelle. Okay, I'll wait one more minute or one more second and then call it quits. All right, well, thank you everybody for joining us and we'll talk soon. Bye.